How's it going everybody? I'm Danny D and welcome to another edition of Lyrical Corner. Something totally news, totally random. I know I'm not the go-to guy for this kind of thing, but I've got some skills. And let's get this going. I'm a little nervous, to be honest. I love the scene, I love the set. <laughs> the human trumpet. beautiful. It was a quiet dark night in an empty street somewhere in London city. Jenny walked alone, she was dragging her feet, she was heading back home to sleep. Well she knew this town, she knew this floor because she walked it about a thousand times before she wanted to escape. Can you blame? I am really, really appreciating hearing more of his singing ability. He's a storyteller, obviously. So the lyrics right now are not something I'm gonna really touch base on, but the way he's delivering them, I think is something notable. Like to go from high rend, which was obviously more of like a speak song. This was like to start right into his singing ability, I think is awesome. Well on the very same night in a different place, there was this hooded young youth by the name of James. He was 14 years old and out of his brain he'd be smart. King Ganga with the boys. James, he grew up to be a kid of the street. His mates called him Screech, he was quick on his feet. He was a liar, a thief, a 14 years old. The devil had set his sights on his soul. Fuck. <laughs> I feel like he goes through a couple beat changes within that too. And if that's true, to me, I feel like he is capable of improvising during a song too, which is really kind of cool. As Jenny walked home all along, she felt scared. Usually she was alright, but it was like there was something in the air. A divine intervention telling her to beware, maybe intuition bogging her and making her so scared. Siren sounded in the distance at the beat of Jenny's feet. A symphony of the night that echoes crime on London streets. Jenny turns a corner, the eyes they me, a poor girl Jenny, a boy named Screech. Give me all your money, bitch, give it to me. If you cooperate, then you'll soon be free. I want your purse, your phone, don't fucking look at me. I mean it, bitch, are you listening to me? This was not where I expected this to go at all. <laughs> I had no idea. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And there was a moment too, like in the performance of it where he, he kind of messed up a word or the transition from one word to another. As a performer, one of the biggest things to take note of are the mistakes people make and their capability of moving past them. I don't care how many times you practice a song or you practice the lyrics, shit happens all the fucking time. Your ability to move past it in such a way where your audience doesn't even know you made a mistake, now that, that is where you really start diving into the professionalism of it. And he, I can already tell, has this, absolutely. Jenny freezes statue like a lady shakes stalactite. Feel like liquid nitrogen in the dark night. She tried to find strength to move, but stayed as still as a statue in high heeled shoes. What the hell are you playing now? You playing games with me? I swear to fucking God, I'll slice the rosy off your cheeks. You think I don't mean it, girl? You don't know me? The last thing you see will be a boy called Screech Reach with the sheath that the blade with the teeth that could bite. Hang on, that was a dope transition from line to line. Like using Screech as the middle ground to be both the ending and beginning. Mine's blowing up right now. Like this, <laughs> she is fucking killing it, dude. Still and slice concrete and he swung possessed with the devil in his chest and the statue she was turned to butter in her breath. Wow. It was a quiet dark night wow. in an empty street somewhere at London City. Jenny lay still on the cold concrete. She's far out somewhere to sleep. Well, she knew this town, she knew this floor, cause she'd walked it about a thousand times before. I guess that she escaped. It's such a shame. Wow, wow. There's a there's a uh, a really natural conversation happening between that his performance and this music video his words and the capability of me being able to like really paint this picture like I feel like the, I'm already like I'm in the zone right now like he's got me in in his fucking world fucking dope Jesus and the guitar transitions slowing down like holy shit 
Oh, what's going on? Okay. Is this a separate thing that he's just weaving into it or? I like the fingerless, fingerless gloves. I was a fan of that when I was younger. <laughs> I don't know why. Ooh! Nicely done. Screeches to, okay, so this is like, it's in parts, huh? Oh, story, it starts. Jenny clocked out like Big Ben. They screech, they boy, where did he go? Wow. He melted into the black night just like snow. Dude, I feel like this is Broadway now. Like it's definitely more on the classical side. It even sounds like a different guitar that he's playing as a matter, like a whole different kind of guitar, like more mariachi or something like that. It, it seems like a mariachi guitar. <laughs> like the whole tone has changed. Snow. Ooh. Big transition. Patrick man, keys let too. me in, please open the door. I think I fucked up Patrick, really fucked up man. I'm not sure, I got crazy. Left this lady lying still on the floor. I think I killed her, Patrick. Come on, man, I can't knock no more. But Screech kept on knocking till his knuckles became sore. But there's no sign of Patrick down at number 54. No refuge for our villain for the bitter hands of fate. With something far more sinister in mind that does away. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, that, I mean, it's such a small moment in the story, but it's such an epic part in the song. Like being able, knocking on the door until your knuckles are sore, like pleading for help, screaming through the door, I did something fucked up. Holy shit. <sighs> He's breathing. Oh man, this is a performance. Hey babe, you in? Now nothing really, I'm just a bit tired, listen. Can I swing around yours for a few moments? I just really miss you, babe. What the fuck do you mean you're busy? You fucking bitch, for fuck's sakes! Jesus. Siren sounds approaching like a banshee in the night. The shrill cry of justice cutting like the sharpest knife. But Screech was never one to run, not one to miss a fight. One hand upon his blade, he turned to face the blue light. It's interesting it's a blade. I know there's like no guns or anything in this in, in Britain, uh, but in my neck of the woods, it would absolutely be a gun. There would be no blade. Even if he used a blade in the situation, there would still be a gun later on, guaranteed. Oh God, he just flips the script so fast when Screech realizes that he's not, that he's fucked, like he has nowhere to go, like he, where, whatever's about to happen, he has no safe place and how fast it immediately goes to fuck you bitch. Oh my God, like I feel, I, I wanna say this is tweaker. This is a tweaker thing, I don't know. Come on then you fucking cunts, let's fucking have you then. I am Screech, I'm the boss, I'm the ender of men. You think that uniform you're wearing means that you own these streets? These are my fucking streets and they call me fucking Screech. Richard was an officer who stood at six foot three. Working London on the night shift, what he didn't think he'd see. Was a boy running at him like an animal possessed. With no time to hesitate, he fired four bullets at Screech's chest. Jesus. Oh, that is fucking dope. Oh! Oh! Dude, dude, that is, oh my god. That was amazing. That was amazing. Cinematic, cinematically amazing. Like, the use of the guitar, as the, f oh my God, this is so poetic. That was super dope. And then the fucking camera falling down, like he is the victim. Wow, it's so funny. Like, you know, coming from a poetic thing, like, but, like slam poetry was my thing. When you're using minimal resources to tell your story, the imagination that comes out of that is remarkable.
oh my God, like all of this, this whole sequence brought it all together. So many different elements are involved with this, but it's just a guy in an alleyway with a guitar and a cameraman, and that's it. I didn't even notice the jumping of the camera at first too. Fuck. Ah, oh, story it ends right to the start. Young Screech and poor Jenny lying one street apart. An officer shaken by the boy that he claimed. Two bodies lay lifeless, and it's such a shame. Was that a car going by? It's such a shame. Ooh, that was nice. And the camera just stays there. If you like that highlight and you want to see more of me watching this completely unedited, hit that link below, Seven Deadly Bananas on Patreon. Get in there and start watching TV with me. Oh, new person, never mind. I'm liking this guitar. It's got kind of a renaissance feel to it. interesting how he's kind of tucking his upper lip like a little bit of that and I don't see that being anything that like strains the voice or anything I just think it's an interesting an interesting maneuver I don't think I've ever seen anybody like actually tuck their top lip in holding tension in the jaw holding tension in the lips it's just kind of frowned on if anything because if you're trying to maintain a falsetto it's creating a stress and a tension within the neck so long as everything else is working correctly jaw tension and stuff is not too much of a problem you know but you do want to work with like a relaxed jaw and in falsetto it's tough to keep that in mind for a, for a guy in particular because it, it's such a humongous jump you know in terms of like how we usually use our vocal cords from our speaking voice to you know you know like trying to hit all of these things but i love the melody he's going with here <laughs> London City, far from pretty, 2005. A lady down in Paddington is fighting just to stay alive. Rhythmic beats and blood stains, she saw a lady weep, she's tired and frail. To set the scene, we must rewind the hands of time for Phyla's tale. Another thing about the style of his singing, I think, is it has so much emotion injected to it. The fact that it's not like sung perfectly or some kind of Mariah Carey level of singing or whatever, like I feel is actually good when it comes to these kinds of songs because it's not necessarily about trying to sound perfect. It's about telling a story. And and the cracks and, and the little tiny flaws and all that stuff make him more human. I love the humanity way more than I prefer, you know, people trying their best to sound perfect. <sighs> what can I say, man? I just, I, he's blowing me away. He's just seriously blowing me away. I, I don't understand how I have not heard this guy sooner. <laughs> Total change in atmosphere. Mm -hmm. 
Violet was a silent girl, grew up with violent stars. Her mother was a drinker and her father was a bastard. Every night he took a tie but never left the room. I'll spare you with the things he did, I'm sure her mother knew. That's, that's, uh, it's an elegant way of saying what he just said right there. When, when what happened to me happened to me, I was about 11 or 12, and it was a trusted family member. And I was able to forgive the act, but the, the consequences afterwards were, were the most long-lasting problems. I was basically like shunned from 60 or 70 percent of, well, everyone except for my mom and my brother. Family, family reunions didn't happen anymore. Family holidays didn't happen anymore. All of a sudden, I was ostracized and it was my fault, and nobody wanted to talk about it. The silence behind it ended up being worse than the act. The silence lasted for decades, years. That's just my experience. That was real. That was some real shit. Like, my mind is tornadoing right now. Violet was a silent girl, she moved out at 16 A semi-detached council flat, paid for by a welfare scheme Packing shelves at Tesco, stacking jars like pickled bricks She met a boy named Stevie and he was a little prick Violet was a silent girl and Violet she fell fast See Stevie was a wrong and the knew how to charm her Every night he took a tie but never left the room History repeats itself he paint her black and blue and dark My blood started to boil on that one, fuck. God, he's taking me back. He's taking me really far back right now. I just gotta absorb that. I gotta absorb that. Like, I had a feeling that through his artistry, there would be a lot of similar tales or at least similar feeling as a result. And I mean, shit, I don't know how many stories I've got that almost literally fall exactly under the lines of what he just said. She never stood a chance. The devil comes to dance. Why are you always so quiet? On her bedroom door and he's irate. He's been drinking and smoking, he's up late. And he stands by her bedside, she shakes. But her eyes stay shut. You fucking slut, I know you're up. And he pinches her eyelids and folds them up. Violet, why are you lying to me, Violet? She stays silent, things turn violent. That's the sound of his fist when they fall like a crashing pilot. Hit like hailstones, one to the collarbone, full force, full blown, blood splat, bone crack, knick knack, paddy whack, one to the jaw and the tooth spat, detached, fist connects and disconnects a bone. A quick deflect to misdirect the blow, but nonetheless his punches met her throat. Such a mess he's left the bruised and broke. Violet, why are you always so silent, Violet? Why are you such a little liar? Hang on, hang on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm. My hands are starting to shake a little bit. <laughs> That was intense. That was intense and lyrically mic droppable. It's almost as if he's using the words to do the performance now. Like you could see it visually, but this is a portion of the song where I feel like you do not need the visuals whatsoever. The words are basically taking over. Such a mess, he's left the bruised and broke. Violet, why are you always so silent, Violet? Why are you such a little liar, Violet? And this is a dance, oh my fucking God. Jesus Christ, dude. He's just dancing around, oh my God. My heart, it's, it's, it doesn't feel like it's racing, but it feels like it's, once, it's like trying to pound out of my chest right now. I wonder if the microphone even hears it. I wouldn't be surprised. Do you think I wanna do this, Violet? In character, she stays silent. Well, say something, Violet. Silence. Fucking say something, Violet. Silence. Wait. Say something, Violet. Not one word. She stays quiet.
London City, far from pretty, 2005. A lady down in Paddington is fighting just to stay alive. The doctor, in a state of shock, saw something here so very wrong. See, Violet, she was pregnant. Poor Violet. She was nine months gone. Turning to the doctor, Violet broke her silence and she cried. If I'm to die right here tonight, please let my baby stay alive. The doctor soon regained composure, called the surgeon to come in. As Violet's world turned to black, the curtains closed, the lights went dim. In London City, far from pretty, 2005. A lady down in Paddington, just lost the fight to stay alive A tragedy or a miracle It happened on these very streets Two twins aligned side by side A girl named Jenny And a boy named Screech Fuck me, fuck me. That was, if it was me performing that piece, I don't think I'd get through it without at least shedding a tear or two, you know? I don't even know what to say, you guys. Like seriously, I, I, I feel shocked. I think I feel shocked, honestly. Absolutely masterful. The words, the cycling through the different genres, both on guitar as well as lyrically. Singing, sing talking, sing rapping, and then walking the entire time through. It seemed like each video was done all in one take. I mean, he had me hooked. He had me hooked, obviously. Like, it, I, I don't know what else to say. I would not be feeling the way I'm feeling unless I was like literally just injected into his world. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, thanks again for watching. I absolutely appreciate it. And we will definitely see you on the next Lyrical Corner.